All right, so in this lesson, we're going to talk about changing dimensions. Now, you'll remember that dimensions are the different, um, the measurements of the different sides of polygons, of quadrilaterals, of triangles. Um, and so, <clears throat> if I had a, a, a rectangle, for example, this side would be one dimension, this side would be one dimension, this would be one dimension, this would be one dimension. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about changing dimensions and how it would affect the perimeter and the area. And I really need you to focus in this lesson when we're talking about perimeter and when we're talking about area because there's going to be different rules for each one. We're going to start off with the easier one, which is perimeter. <coughs> First, we have a definition. <coughs> Our definition is scale factor, and this is a word that you're going to see a lot in this lesson and a lot going forward. So scale factor is a ratio between two sets of measurements. So basically what it's saying is how big is this compared to this, or how big is this compared to this. And a hint down here, it's not going to make sense quite yet, but it will in just a couple of slides here. You can multiply the measurement by the scale factor to determine the new measurement. So once you find the scale factor, which I'm going to show you, you can take a dimension and multiply it by the scale factor to find the new dimension. And again, this sounds really confusing right now, I'm sure, but just give me a chance to explain it and it'll all make sense. Okay, let's talk about what some of these words mean because they're words that we're going to come up with and we need to know. So doubled. Doubled means times two. And I actually don't like that I wrote the X there because that could be confusing. So doubled means times two. Tripled means times three. Quadrupled means times four halved, and I'm going to show you how we're going to do this to make it easy. Halved could be divided by two, cut in thirds could be divided by three, and quartered could be divided by four. But I want to make it easier for you. We can do, so actually go ahead and write that down first. So write halved is divided by two, cut into thirds is divided by three, quartered is divided by four. But with these, I also want to show you that you can do it this way. You can also do halved as times one half. You could do thirds as times one third. And you can do quartered as times one fourth. Any of these will work. Okay, it just depends on are you more comfortable multiplying or dividing? Okay, <coughs> so make sure you keep this in mind as you go forward. All right, we're actually going to skip that. Okay, first, remember I told you we're going to talk about perimeter and area. And first, I'm going to talk about perimeter. I know that there's a lot of words on the screen, but I really just want you to focus on what I'm showing you. Okay, so here we have figure A. Figure A is a triangle. It's also an isosceles triangle, and we know that because two of the sides are the same. So we have dimensions of 3, 2, and 3. So what is the perimeter of figure A? Well, 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 2 is 8. Okay? Now, over here, I have figure B. It's also an isosceles triangle because it has two matching, two congruent sides. What is the perimeter of figure B? Well, 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 4 is going to be 16. Now, what I'm asking you to do, and remember, we're only working with perimeter. We're not doing area yet. What I'm asking you to do is find the scale factor, which means how do I go from a perimeter of 8 to a perimeter of 16? And I want you to look back at these words that we just talked about. Did I double it, triple it, quadruple it, have it, third it, or quarter it? Now most of you would say that I doubled it, and that's correct. So 
The answer to this is a scale factor is 2. And that's all you have to do. Okay, obviously it's going to get a little bit harder, but that's what you need to do. Okay, let's try another example. <coughs> all right, so here we have a square, and it has the dimensions 5 centimeters, 8 centimeters, and just because I'm a visual person, um, I'm going to go ahead and fill this in with the other dimensions. Okay, so it just wants to know what is the perimeter. Okay, so 5, <coughs> sorry, 5 plus 8 is 13. 5 plus 8 is 13. 13 plus 13 is going to be 26 centimeters. Now, it's telling me to take those dimensions and to double them. When I double something, that is a scale factor of 2. Okay, if it told me to triple, that's a scale factor of 3. If it told me to quarter, that's a scale factor of one-fourth. All right, so now we're going to double the dimensions and it's going to have a scale factor of two. So let's double these dimensions. Instead of eight, this is going to be 16 centimeters. Same here. And instead of five, this is going to be 10 centimeters. Now, before you add all those up, I want to show you the two different ways you can figure out the perimeter of this. First of all, since I know that my scale factor is 2, I can just take this perimeter and multiply it times 2 and get my answer of 52. Or what I can do is I could add all these up and I will also get 52 centimeters. All right, let's try another example. So here we have another rectangle. And I'm sorry, if you can go ahead and make this yards, please. <coughs> okay, so um, I like to fill in the rest of them. So I'm going to call this five yards. I'm going to call this two yards. So what is the perimeter? 5 plus 2 is 7, 5 plus 2 is 7, 7 plus 7 is going to be 14 yards. Now it's telling me to triple the dimensions. So that is going to be a scale factor of 3 times 3. Okay. So <coughs> what I'm going to do is take these dimensions and triple them. What is 5 tripled? Well, 5 plus 5 plus 5 is going to be 15. The same over here. 2 tripled, 2 plus 2 plus 2 is going to be 6. Now I have to find my perimeter. Now remember, I can do this in a couple different ways. I could add up the dimensions to the new rectangle, but what I could also do is take the old perimeter and simply multiply it by the scale factor of 3. So let me say that one more time. Because I know the scale factor is 3, I tripled all my dimensions. I could either add up all my new dimensions or I can do 14 times 3. Either way, I'm going to get 42 yards. Okay? All right, let's try another example. We have another rectangle here. So I'm going to fill in the missing dimensions. And I need to add all these up to get my perimeter. <coughs> when you add all those up, you're going to get a perimeter of 70 inches. And remember, you need to be doing the math with me. So if I'm going too fast in the video, go ahead and hit pause. Now with this one, it says cut the dimensions in half. Okay? So here, your scale factor, and I like to be consistent and use all multiplication, so here I'm going to say that my scale factor is one half, okay? So before I go any further, ultimately, I need to find the perimeter of this new rectangle. But what I could do is I can do 70 times one half, 
okay? And you can do that as times 0.5, because you know how to go from fraction to decimal, or you could sit here and, and, and um, cut each one of these in half, write the new dimensions, add them all up, and come up with your perimeter. Either way, you're going to get the same answer, and I'm going to do it both ways. So half of 9 is 4.5, and half of 26 is going to be 13. This is inches. So when I add 13 plus 13 plus 4.5 plus 4.5, I get 35. But I also want you to try it the other way. Do 70 times 1 half. You're still going to get 35. Okay? All right. Now we're going to switch gears and talk about area. Area is going to be the same process, but it's going to be just a little bit harder. There's one more step involved. Okay? <coughs> so if you really, truly don't feel comfortable with what we've done so far, Go back and redo a couple of those examples, and then we can move ahead with area. All right. Again, there's a lot of words on the screen. Just focus on what I'm showing you. So over here is figure A. I need to figure out the area of figure A. I know that area now is base times height. So my area is going to be 20. Here I have figure B. Again, I need to find the area. It's base times height, so 10 times 8 is 80. Now, <coughs> excuse me, how, if I told you that the scale factor is 2, how do you get from an area of 20 to an area of of 80. So if the scale factor is 2, if I doubled it, okay, how do I get from 20 to 80? Well, here's the extra step. Whatever you determine the scale factor to be, and I'm telling you in this case that it's doubled, it's 2, okay, because here I go from 4 to 8 and 5 to 10, those are doubled, you need to square it or make it to the second power. So, 2 times 2 is 4, 20 times 4 is 80, okay? And I know it's a little bit confusing, so let's jump into some examples. Okay, we have the uh, a rectangle again. Let me fill in the missing dimensions. And let's start basic. What is the area of this rectangle, area is base times height. 5 times 8 is 40 centimeters squared. <coughs> now, I'm telling you to double the dimensions, okay? But because this is area, whatever, we, whatever our scale factor is, we have to do it to the second power. So it's going to be a scale factor of 2 to the second power or 4. Okay? So now, let me think the best. Okay, so what I want you to do is it's, let's do it this way first. Okay? So if our scale factor is 4, because I doubled the dimensions and it has to be squared, 4 times 40 is going to give us 160 centimeters squared, okay? But when I go to fill in these dimensions here, all I did is double them, okay? Because that's what it asked me to do. So, oops, I did this backwards, didn't I? It's supposed to be a five. So instead of five, here I have 10 centimeters. Instead of eight, here I have 16 centimeters. Instead of 5, I have 10 centimeters, and instead of 8, I have 16 centimeters. Now, if you wanted to ignore all of this for a minute, all I did is double these dimensions. But when I did that and I asked you to find the area of this new rectangle, what do you have to do? Well, 
base times height, 10 times 16 is 160. <coughs> okay, let's look at this one, change this to um, yards again. Okay, so I'm going to fill in the missing dimensions here. All right, so what is my area? Well, my area is base times height, so 5 times 2 is 10 yards squared. Okay, this time it's asking me to triple the dimensions. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to have to triple 5. So 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 15. This is also 15. 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6. So this is going to be 6. And this is going to be 6. Now, <coughs> you can just find that <coughs> the area, okay, of this rectangle by doing 15 times 6. And you're going to get 90 yards squared. But I also need you to determine the scale factor. If I ask you to triple, that's going to be a scale factor of 3. But because I'm doing area instead of perimeter, it is squared. And what is 3 squared, 3 <coughs> to the second power? It's going to be 9. And you can check your work that way. The original area, 10 times 9, is 90. <coughs> All right, let's try this last one. So I'm going to fill in my missing dimensions. And I need to find my area. So it's going to be base times height. And it's going to give me 234 inches squared. Okay? Now, um, I need to cut the dimensions in half. So that's going to be a scale factor of 1 half. But, because it's area, it's 1 half to the second power. Now, Go back to when we did um, expanded form. How do you write that in expanded form? One half times one half. What is one times one? One. Two times two? Four. So my scale factor is now one fourth. <coughs> now, I can take 234 and multiply it times one fourth or point or point twenty five and I can get my new area or I can cut my dimensions in half and still get that same area okay so half of twenty six is thirteen inches half of nine is four point five inches and so 13 times 4.5 is going to be 58.5 inches squared. <coughs> okay? All right. You go ahead and just try this part right here. And I'm going to do it too, and then we'll stop. Okay, go ahead and pause if you're not done. <coughs> if you are done, <coughs> let's check. Did you get a perimeter? Oops. Did you get a perimeter of 28 centimeters? You should have, because perimeter is the outside. So 9 plus 9 is 18, plus 10 is 28. Did you get an area of 40 centimeters? Remember, area of a triangle is area equals base times height times 0 0.5. <coughs> so it's area equals base of 10, height of 8, 0 0.5, and you should get <coughs> 40 centimeters squared. Now, let's get more complicated here. Using this information, let's go ahead and fill in 
the different scale fact the different perimeters and areas for the different scale factors. I'm going to do the first one with you. So scale factor of two, <coughs> we need to find the perimeter. Now remember, we just take the perimeter and multiply it times the scale factor. So 28 times two <coughs> is going to be 56 centimeters. Okay. Now let's work on the area. If the scale factor is two, that means I need to square it. So 2 squared equals 4. Now do the area 40 times 4 to get your new area. And that should give you 160 centimeters squared. And, and if I'm going too slow for you, this is a you try, so you go ahead of me. But I know it's a little hard, so I'm also talking it through. Okay, then we have a scale factor of 4 using the same information. For perimeter, it's very easy. Just do the original perimeter times 4. So 28 times 4 is going to give you 112. Now when we look at the area, we have to square it. 4 squared is 16. So use the area times 16. So 40 times 16 is going to be 640 centimeters squared. <coughs> Lastly, we have a scale factor of 1 half. Okay? To find the perimeter, it's very easy. 28 times 1 half. We know that 1 half is 0. 0.5. So 28 times 0. 0.5 is going to be 14 centimeters. But when we go to do the area, we have to square it. And so 1 half times 1 half equals 1 fourth. Okay? So what is 40 times 1 fourth? Well, 1 fourth is 0 0.25. So 40 times 0 0.25. And that's going to equal 10 centimeters squared. <clears throat> All right, I do have a challenge problem for you. Um, I'm not going to walk you through it, mostly because um, my voice is going, but um, I will scan through it so that you can see it on your screen and you can pause it and solve it. And if you write it down on a piece of paper with your name on it and turn it in, I'll give you some extra credit for it. Okay, I'll read it out loud to you too, just in case anything needs to be clarified. Nina wants to replicate. That means to create something, um, replicate, so to duplicate something, okay? A painting she saw in the museum for her living room. The museum painting measures 6.3 feet on each side, which is going to tell you that it's a square. If Nina makes her copy three times smaller than the original painting, how much of her wall will it cover? So once you figure out that, then you need to do part two. How much wood will Nina need to make a frame for the painting? And remember, this is the new painting, the one that she's made three times smaller. And lastly, the cost of the wood at the hardware store is $1.20 per foot. How much will Nina spend on the wood after sales tax of 7.5% is applied? So again, if you want to do the challenge problem, <coughs> Write part one, your answer, part two, your answer, and part three in your answer. Write your name on it, turn it in on my desk, and um, I will look it over and give you some extra credit. All right, that is the end of this lesson. I know that scale factor is a little confusing. It's not hard. It's just a little confusing, and it's something that you can get really good at quickly, but you have to practice it, okay? So make sure that you ask me any questions you have in class.